The Stolen Anvil is a series of Minecraft servers my friends and I have hosted for over 10 years, beginning when we were in middle school and before the game even officially released in 2011. It includes 10 different worlds that have lasted for various amounts of time and spanned countless updates. The server name comes from an inside joke that started in our middle school engineering class where we would talk about stealing an anvil in the back of the wood shop. Around the time of this is when we were starting the first world, and I believe it was David who suggested the name initially. I have a great fondness for these worlds. I can recall so many events and builds from so many years ago, as they are just seared into my memory at this point. Being around for nearly half of our lives, these worlds have gone through many changes and have rich histories. I will now recap the histories of these worlds, and we are in for quite a treat. Over the course of this series, there have been some memorable builds, hilarious moments, the occasional conflict, and even some mysteries. So come along with me while I tell you about the journey of the Stolen Anvil. This server started in fall of 2011, around when all of us were just starting 8th grade. We'd all been playing Minecraft for a couple years, more or less, and had dabbled in the occasional server, but this was the first one that lasted more than a week or two, and that we decided to give a proper name. David was the host at this time, as he had the know-how to make something as daunting as a beta Minecraft server a reality. David's little brother Daniel naturally joined us with the likes of Nick, Noah, myself, and eventually Alex, once we realized the new kid with glasses that sat at the lunch table next to us was actually pretty cool. Also on here were some randoms David would add from the internet, but they didn't really do much with us and kept to themselves. We all built small starter houses around some plains harbored amongst swamps and forests, primarily out of the new giant mushrooms that had just dropped in the 1.8 adventure update. Naturally, once that grew old, we'd all began to expand into the surrounding area, shaping the terrain heavily. David would connect his classic brick slash obsidian house via an underwater tunnel. Noah and I built some large oak manors. Some were successful and some were mine. Something about this house though, I can't quite put my finger on it. Nick's famous elemental towers made memorable additions to our skyline of cobblestone pillars and debris. We'd eventually expand into some other settlements that were more of a trek and not so easily connected to our fine homey spawn. Some of those were really memorable, like that one time on a whim, a bunch of us went a thousand blocks out and made a big interconnected anthill base in a mountain. And I'm still waiting on the sequel to that video, ten years later. Wait, I'm just gonna stop this to... For a second. Okay, bye. We'll see you in the next part. Whoever's watching this, probably only six people. Or like that one Nick made where he had a secret base under a fountain, and that's all I remember about it to this day. Others, though... This world would only last a couple months, but it felt like forever back then as we would come home from school and spend the rest of the day building stuff or making each other mad, only to spend the next day at school drawing up ideas for what we were going to do on the server that night. With the full release update coming the following November, we decided to start anew, leaving this quirky little world of ours as the genesis of our series of servers. So the 1.9 update, or what it would turn into, the 1.04 release, comes out in November 2011 and we're pretty fresh from the old server. We started out in another plains biome, but this world would have a much different atmosphere that would echo into our future servers for a time. Spawn was much less populated on Anvil 2, with just some starter huts and a few intricate builds David and Daniel made. For whatever reason, we got a lot more territorial on this server, quickly splitting into three teams without much discussion. David and Daniel would stick around Spawn for the most part, Nick and Noah would wander far away to a snowy plains to the north, and Alex and I would go east where we settled on an island we'd eventually call Anvil Island. We tried to keep our bases secret from the other teams, and it seemed like we all generally remained in isolation. Because of this, I can't recall much of what went on during this world besides Alex and I discovering Mushroom Islands, and it subsequently becoming my favorite biome to this day. We stumbled upon one that we'd visit over and over without using the nether or paths, we just knew where to go by heart. Nick and Alex at one point discovered something they called Chicken Valley. One day David and Daniel decided to kill the Ender Dragon on their own, and Alex and I got so mad about it we tried to steal the egg David kept in his basement, but had a change of heart last second. 
The server would only end up lasting around a couple months because David's parents wouldn't let him host a 24-7 server anymore because of bandwidth issues, and we said goodbye to this world with some hopes that maybe we could do this again someday. Now begins one of the bigger servers of the Anvil series, beginning sometime in early summer 2012 just as we were moving on to high school. The recent 1.2 update had released a few months prior, adding redstone lamps, iron golems, and jungles. Nick was this server's host, picking up from where David had left off, and settled with a swamp as the world spawn, where the grass was infamously black back then. David would make one of, if not the first, of his classic two-story houses, as well as this. Alex and I would make our way on after a week or so, immediately beelining for a coveted mushroom biome, which we found very quickly. While we built a shared house on what we would call Violet Island, David would branch out to a desert and build Lost Pegasus, a somewhat theme park with games, shops, and an ice space needle. Nick and Noah would settle alongside a mountainside a bit further. While we were all pretty far apart, these bases were all connected to our first nether hub. We'd also beat the Ender Dragon as a group for the first time and would go on to make an Enderman farm. So we had some pretty good infrastructure on this server and were in it for the long haul. Pranks had become a bigger thing on Anvil 3 and no one was spared. Nick filled our house with signs while Alex and I were bringing mushrooms thousands of blocks to Lost Pegasus. We would retaliate with putting snow golems in Nick's house at spawn. And one time I burnt Noah's house in secret and also put dozens of sound machines all around the walls of his base. While this is a server I remember fondly, it sadly did have some tragedies. See, we were still kids back then and we weren't spared from early teenage angst. There was some fighting and it reflected in our blocky paradise here. Alex and I would eventually stop talking, and in the divorce, I got the island. I'd abandon and dilapidate our shared home and begin other buildings and connecting pathways across the mushroom biome, settling into Violet Island as my own base. Alex would move to a plains in which he made a pagoda. Noah and I would often butt heads and would blatantly spy, kill, and steal from each other. Alliances would begin to loosely form, including the Elusive Brotherhood, a secret society duo whose mission was to cleanse the server of its impurities, meaning they'd tear down some smaller builds around the server they deemed to be poor quality. All of this would come to a head on December 11th, 2012. In the early evening, one of our friends, Lennon, would join the server while I was on. I had never seen him on here before, but in chat he explained that he was on right as the server had started, and Nick had slighted him in some way. I think maybe he killed him or didn't let him use a skeleton farm. But he explained that he was back for revenge, showed me a chest of stash goods he had near spawn, and asked me to take him to Nick's base. I think I just wanted to see some stuff get blown up and it not be my fault, so I did. He went on to fill up Nick's basement and Noah's base with TNT. Nick's basement went first. Not much of importance was ruined, though. He must have had some blood out for Noah, though, because his base did not get off easy. As soon as Noah's house blew up, I shot Lennon until he died, then banned him as fast as my fingers could type slash ban, then I informed Nick. Up to this point, server commands were enabled on our servers, so we all had the ability to kick and ban each other using an honor system. That ended following these events, and the server got a whitelist. Noah would abandon this house after all the horrors it saw, moving far away to a desert he'd settle in for the rest of our time on Anvil 3. We all seemed to have some trust issues following this, and alliances and secret bases became the norm, as were the search for each other's secret bases. I'm sure there are some we all never found or had forgotten about ourselves, so I can only talk about the ones I know about or have pictures of. The most elaborate one, though, had to be what I made under Violet Island. You'd break a couple blocks in this hill, replace them, and go down the ladder into the depths of this cave. Then you'd need to run to the various invisibility potions to hide your name tag. I wasn't always the most careful about this, though, and it would prove to be my downfall. Alex saw my name down there once when he was snooping, and he went to explore when I logged off. He'd eventually notify Nick, and what they found was pretty incriminating. They discovered an item duplicator that had been duplicating dragon eggs and diamond blocks using a glitch in Snapshot 13W01A. Along with stolen armor I took from Noah and suspicious signs with coordinates to everyone's bases, Nick made the decision to ban me for a day and give me the first of three strikes, a rule which was made up for this instance and then never used again. Ever since Lennon's attacks on the server, I feared he would come for me next somehow, maybe hijacking Nick's account or coercing someone into unbanning him, so I had been creating extra diamonds as a failsafe to make tools to keep him at bay, of which I had kept separate from my normal diamonds. I was also protective of the dragon egg since the events of Anvil 2, so I wanted to make sure there were replacements if he destroyed it. Nick then made the decision to destroy the dragon egg as a way to bring balance to the server. Now, today, I was alerted by Alex here that... Trey had a secret base 
and was housing none other than the Ender Dragon Egg and a duplication system. Fuck. These were some dark days for the Stolen Anvil series. We were fighting, scheming, and cheating. I might be over-dramatizing these events and making the server sound like a toxic place, but there were good times in the middle of this as well. We got together to play mini games we'd make together in Las Pegasus and Violet Island. We'd play server-wide paintball tournaments where we'd hunt each other down across the entire map, fighting in our bases as we found each other. Natalie would eventually join the server. Alex and I were even beginning to reconcile once again. Sadly though, this happy ending would never be fully realized as we quickly ended the server voluntarily, as we had a great idea for what we needed to do for the fourth one. In early 2013, we had one of the more mundane servers, which managed to be lost to time with no backups and a lacking history. It lasted from March to July with no real structure or events occurring, as we all sporadically built in our own disconnected pockets around a jungle. The server corrupted in a power outage, deleting some of the player files, and wiping out any activity still around. <laughs> A new major server would begin in October 2013 as the 1.7 update released, adding new biomes like savannas, mesas, and roofed forests. Fishing also got an overhaul, so a lot of us started our houses on the edge of spawn by the new deep ocean. This would become one of the more active servers with some new players being added to the roster, namely Autumn, Kevin, and Bree, and Daniel would return once more with an actual account this time. Anvil 6's spawn would actually grow to be a decent village with proper paths and infrastructure. Nick's House of Funk would make its famous debut here, as well as David's Ant Hill home and Kevin's first castle. This thing was so big, Kevin would actually hire some of us to work on it for him. There'd eventually be a grand city hall on the edge of the village to host the dragon egg and a giant map, but it would never be finished. In Anvil 6, we would actually all collect together to beat the dragon, but it would take a turn for the worse. We all went in, mostly in diamond armor, but we got a floating platform spawn. Squished like sardines, we all mumbled about getting to the land a dozen or so blocks away. My answer to this was to use my few oak logs to bridge. Alex berated me in chat for not converting them into planks as I enderpearled to the island. Behind me, my friends, abandoned by my quick wits, were swarmed by the dragon, sweeping them into the depths below, leaving me and maybe one other person I can't remember to finish the fight. I whittled it down to near death while they all scrambled back, joining me in time to witness the finale. I would never hear the end of my log bridging from Alex. Why don't you make it into wood plank? Afterwards, he'd eventually go on to create an underground base in his classic style, hidden beneath an abandoned house. I moved from spawn to begin my first of many mansions, located between a Savannah M and Mesa Bryce. Included inside were two storage systems for Autumn and myself, large curved windows to view the scenery, and an auto brewery all connected to a central atrium open to the sky. Around the plains were paths that would lead to the surrounding mesas so people could take in the scenery. Sadly, it would never be complete as the scale and intense block palette of cyan clay and quartz would prolong my progress until the very end. There were some other smaller builds scattered across the world like Autumn's Mushroom Biome, Daniel's Bank Vault, and Noah's Mountain Home, and all of these were connected via the best nether hub across any anvil server. Entering the spawn portal, you're greeted with the four colored sections that would define the cardinal directions. Choose an entrance and embark down a tunnel on horse, foot, or cart if possible. Some would customize their paths with a certain style, while others just waited for me to get tired of an open hole in the hub and make it myself out of cobblestone. I was just about the only one playing by the end. I'd take a screenshot every time I saw someone join and show them the progress of my mansion. It would be on one of the quartz runs for the mansion that I would see the last of this world, as the server would crash due to a power outage. Even though we had the world still and could have still kept it going, it seemed like a good time to stop. In early 2014, still in the long 1.7 update, we began the seventh world of the series. If you couldn't tell by now, the servers kind of follow a certain trend where we'd have one long active server followed by a particularly inactive one. Part of that was because there'd be so little time between some of these worlds that these inactive ones were kind of like an intermission to the next crazy big world. With that being said though, Anvil 7 still had some structure, some life to it, 
While it was mostly Autumn and I for the majority, Nick, David, and Bree definitely had a hand in this world in the early days. We didn't even fight the dragon on this world. From what I remember, this server in particular might have been hard to play for some people because of the performance they were getting. Maybe that had to do with the update at the time, who knows. After much deliberation and asking Nick if he could turn the server on every day, he passed the reins to me about halfway through Anvil 7, fulfilling my lifelong dream of hosting a Minecraft server. We'd settled in a savanna next to a desert and plains, the terrain was very flat and the spawn that would develop had very little inspiration. It was pretty much just a single long path with our buildings all attached. We'd eventually create another hub that I attached my three bases onto. A mountain cabin that I'd eventually burned down out of disgust for some reason. A guardian temple that was pretty on par for me at the time. And a jungle area that I'd reside in until the end of the server, as I realized even I was experiencing some creative fatigue. I could only hope the next server would be different. Following Anvil 7 and the release of the 1.8 Bountiful update, in August 2014 we immediately began the 8th Anvil, what would be the longest and most active of the servers. This one is my favorite of the worlds we've built in the series. I went all out on this one, and so did a lot of us. Starting off this world, I decided to enact a world border that would slowly increase over time. The thought behind this was to keep us all contained so we'd play more as a group than we'd done in the past. Sometimes you just want to set off and make a base far away, never to be seen again. And that's fine, but I was just hoping to try something new with this world. For the most part, I feel that it was successful in keeping us all together. After a few months with the border, I took it down so we could all expand and do our own bases, but that never really happened. Spawn just continued to grow and grow. The sense of community from us all being together while we built up our little city is why this is my favorite world. As we'd grown up into later high school years, we'd become a bit more mature compared to some of the older servers. We were actually getting along and not griefing each other's bases or killing each other. I'd originally started in this world with a lot of secrecy because that's just what the norm was back then, but that eventually got busted. There's a button. After that I decided to try something new. I built a huge skyscraper I called Trey Tower, my main base of the server that I'd keep upgrading as time went on. With Alex's towers, David's TTT paintball arena, and all of our beacons, Spawn really felt like a city, which would eventually be called Anvil City. This city would expand with a second town square marked by an anvil statue, where we'd put the courthouse, iron farm, and museum. This is where I'd begun to document the history of our servers. Since this server was so long running, some of us would come and go, returning with bursts of new inspiration. While while Anvil City continued to expand, big projects would anchor themselves on the outskirts of town. Kevin would continue to work on his second castle, a much bigger endeavor than the previous one. The Ape Haven would emerge among a swamp island near Spawn, as would David's space station, and eventually my zoo. This zoo would be my main big project after my skyscraper, in which I'd make glass containers for some of the cooler mobs in the game. The main attraction was Z-World, an exhibit where you could see zombies emerge from the water when you were sitting in the viewing glass. This server wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, despite all the good times and good builds that were happening. A strange occurrence took place in the middle of the night on April 4th, 2015. I was AFK at the Iron Farm like I often was, and when I came back to my computer in the morning, this is what I see in the chat log. We'd had a whitelist established for the server, in which only players on that whitelist could get on. Yet someone with the username Revelation IV came onto the server. They greeted their arrival with a pleasant hello in chat opened their inventory to get the inventory achievement, and then promptly logged off. With the server log, I could see at exactly what time and what coordinate a player enters or leaves the server. This revelation IV was only on for a minute and logged off somewhere near the fountain, where a new player would have spawned anyway, so they didn't really move far. I've done my homework several times since then, looking up on player tracking websites what this person's username would have been and what their skin looked like. You have to understand that around this time, they just added the ability to change your name, and this is what it looked like when you did. And this player didn't have have a different name shown. If we look it up now though, it looks like they're going by a new username, and if you look down here, it seems like they actually had a username before Revelation IV. XXLegendXX98. Cool. 
Anyway, looks like they're going by Stilt N223 these days. Looking up that name on YouTube gets you nowhere, but looking up this name on Google brings up this GitHub page where it's on a list of player names for something to do with old school RuneScape. Anyway, I'm sure this is just someone somewhere within the range of people I know, or a friend of a friend, but all I know is that they're a RuneScaper and they have the know-how to bypass a Minecraft server whitelist, which I'm sure isn't that hard. Anyway, after about a year I noticed everyone was pretty poor to the server, as it was usually just me playing with the occasional Alex or Dave David cameo, and this could probably be attributed to the world's age and its performance. I'll admit my PC was probably not good enough to host this server 24-7, but I think the abundance of trees at spawn also didn't help. To shake things up again, I decided to make a drastic change in moving our spawn. I chose a plains biome a couple hundred blocks away behind the zoo, changed the world's spawn location, and got us off to a new start in what I called New Anvil City. We laid out city blocks and a grid to place our various buildings, and we filled out the spawn from there. The best part of this new location, though, had to be our recreation of our old high school, which we used to poke fun at for the most part. Overall, this new location did help a lot in getting us back into the server again, as Alex got to work on a small castle and dinosaur museum, and David on his Sears Tower. But it was still just us three for the most part. This server was almost two years long and spanned so many people and game updates and trends, there's too much to cover here alone. I've described a lot here, and I haven't even mentioned the Sandy Street Dome, my Mushroom Island, the Flavors of the Day, the Help Me Cow, Hidden Rabbits, or any of the secret bases along the way. There's just so much to say about this world, and I think that's why I have such a fondness for it all these years later. When I reflect back on my time in high school, I think about this server. Not only because it was around for two years, but because those two years were filled with good memories of just my friends and I messing around and getting our craft on after school, and making videos about it. To close this server, we picked one of the last days of senior year when we could get on for the final time, where we took one last group photo together to close out this world that abridged the latter half of our high school years. This would be the last Anvil server, a true end of an era, as we moved on to early adulthood and left all this to the sands of time and the memory of the good old days. One more slice. One more slice. Alright, come over here, scoot your chair out so we can sit down. It's been fun. Goodbye, world. Until next time. After a three-year hiatus from the servers, Nick decided to revive the Anvil series, with Anvil 9 beginning in May 2019, just after the release of 1.14. We were in the backswing of our college careers, and some of us were understandably rusty. We'd started our world in a classic little forest, and besides a little Shrek-like jaunt into the swamp bottom took, we never really branched away from spawn at all. In the beginning, everyone made little wooden huts and either transformed theirs or made a new house behind spawn. We'd eventually connect everyone's bases together through a tunnel system right under the dirt like some kind of rat haven. Besides that, there was not much infrastructure this time around. No mob farms, no nether hub, and definitely not any ender dragons. There were a couple low-level pranks pulled, like a recycling service and a throwback to Noah's torment with noisemakers hidden underground. We mostly just came on and played after work in between semesters for a month. Some of us only got on a couple times. By July, the server ended as Nick's realm trial expired. While short-lived, this server was still a nice intermission amid educational and work responsibilities and took us back to the good times. The year is 2020. The world has ended. What do we do? Like everyone else, we started another Minecraft server. In addition to the pandemic, most of us were out of college or at the end of it, so our time was freeing up once more. I would return as the realm's owner this time, starting us off in yet another plains biome. We were on version 1.16, the nether update, and the game's features were starting to fill the world up more, and that let us be a little more creative than I feel earlier worlds allowed. We were swimming in sewers, throwing puffer fish and tridents at each other. Our houses were all pretty traditional, all sprinkled amongst spawn like always, connected with paths over time and the gaps filled out in classic anvil fashion. After 10 worlds, the same notes start being played, just different ways of playing them through the game's version and our spawn location. But it's the standout little pieces that really make each world special and memorable in their own way, like Alex's zoo. Planning it from the beginning, his starter house would eventually be its own exhibit as he made himself one of the animals in it. 
You could take pictures with polar bears, collect exclusive zoo potatoes, even go to Arby's. It covered many different biomes and mobs from the games, it was great. This world didn't have another hub, sadly, but it did have another lens hub to make David feel more welcome. It was functional too, with ice paths to boat on and organized books to tell you which paths at what destinations. The best part of this world, though, may have been the paintball island. On these servers, we're always shooting each other, whether that be on the fly or on spawn, or in designated arenas we make. But on Anvil 10, with Alex's help, I actually set up an entire paintball arena with paths and buildings across an entire island, just for shooting each other. There was an underground sewer and cave network that ran underneath and led into some of the buildings. There were high points to defend, easter eggs. We even kept coming back and adding stuff to the island to adjust weak points and add more features. This kept us coming back to the server for entire nights of just paintball. I can see it being a world staple from now on. As another school year came to a close, activity started to wane like it always does. I decided to close out the server with a scavenger hunt for Alex based around David's survival maps that he'd made in middle school, of which he notoriously never provided a conclusion. Starting with a book in his mailbox leading to the coordinates towards a grave, I had him solving puzzles that led to different locations and remote areas where I'd rebuilt some of the places from David's maps to put my own spin on the survival story he put together, with the finale being a remote island thousands of blocks away where Alex had to take down a missile silo defended by a wither. While I didn't get to see the whole thing myself, I imagine it was pretty cool. And this would conclude the Anvil story. Since 2011, I've played on these worlds with these friends, creating memories I will always hold with great fondness, and while they all can have the same general foundation, they are all unique in their own way. Throughout these worlds, we've experienced so many changes in them as we build, explore, fight, and dream. But we're not done yet. We've already begun the 11th server as of winter 2022, and we've even let Alex host this time. Try secret video when. Is it about um, all the servers? There are so many creations, so many experiences, and so many good times in this series, and that won't go away. I thought these worlds would end at Anvil 8 in 2016, but I was wrong. I don't know what's in store for these Minecraft times with my friends. It could end tomorrow, or maybe I'll be making another one of these in the next 10 worlds. Who knows? Whatever happens, I'll be there. Making more memories.